Shivaji Maran, Dr. Gagamadan here. In this video, we are going, going to discuss about uh, questions, uh, mostly pediatric recall questions from INISIT May uh, 2020. So, let's begin. Uh, the first question I could recollect was, which of the following is associated with congenital absence or vast difference in seminal vesicles? The options were tuberous sclerosis, cystic fibrosis, Kalman syndrome and testicular feminizing syndrome. This is the option D, testicular feminizing syndrome. The correct answer out of this is cystic fibrosis. Yes, uh, we know that Nelson clearly says uh, that more than 95% of the males, they have uh, the body and tail of epididymis, body and tail of epididymis, vast efferents and seminal vesicles uh, is either obliterated or atretic right so correct answer to this question is uh, cystic fibrosis at my time the option was given in another the question was in other way that was the question was azoospermia is seen in then the answer to this question was also cystic fibrosis in cystic fibrosis you can see azoospermia in case of males and also female infertility is also uh, a feature of cystic fibrosis right the next question was which of the following is an x-linked dominant condition uh, the options were sma dmd that is duchenne muscular dystrophy red syndrome and otc deficiency the answer to this question is clear cut red syndrome there are just there are very few x-linked dominant uh, conditions uh, that are uh, seen so red syndrome is one of these another example are apart from red syndrome X-linked hypophosphatemic rickets, Dannon's disease, and oculogenital digital syndrome, and uh, one type of neurocutaneous syndrome, incognitia pigmenti. Right now, few words about red syndrome. We all know that red syndrome is an X-linked dominant condition that involves MECP2 gene. On long arm of X chromosome, X228 is involved. Females are more common involved than males. Yes, males can be involved very rarely whenever there is duplication of this MECP2 gene. Right? What happens in red syndrome? These children generally grow normally up to one year of age. Yes, they grow normally up to one year of age after that there are regression of milestones ataxia and seizures you can see these three things regression of milestones ataxia seizures that are generally generalized tonic clonic seizures regression of milestones more mostly vocal and uh, motor milestones regression and the hallmark of red syndrome is there are stereotypical ringing hand movements the stereotypical hand wringing movements. This is the hallmark. Also, red syndrome is an important cause of acquired microcephaly. Most of the times, uh, INICT also asked various pedigrees. Uh, so, one time X-linked dominant uh, pedigree was also given. It was somewhat like this. What you can see here, you can notice two things here that every successive generation is affected, X linked dominant condition. Mothers give their disease to 50% of the male and 50% of the female child. Mothers see their children equally, right? They give their disease to 50% of the male child and 50% of the female child. But whenever the male is affected, whenever the father is affected, only the daughters are affected, right? These are daddy's girls. But uh, the father can only transmit to their daughters. All the sons are unaffected. Right? Another question was, which of the following is the best way to assess the adequate response of ventilation during neonatal resuscitation? The options was chest rise, improvement in heart rate and auscultation. The clear cut answer to this question is improvement in heart rate. Right? It is again a repeat question.
right it is clearly given in nrp that the most important indicator of successful positive pressure ventilation is rising heart rate it is the most important indicator right the next question was which amino acid doesn't need to be restricted in diet and msud that is maple syrup urine disease even if you don't know what is maple syrup urine disease you can simply solve this question by the process of elimination the options are leucine isoleucine valine and methionine you can see that here that leucine isoleucine and valine these are all branch chain amino acid whereas methionine is not a branch chain amino acid right so the odd one out here is methionine and answer to this question is methionine a few points about maple syrup urine disease like any other inborn error of metabolism maple syrup urine disease also has an autosomal recessive inheritance uh, it is caused by a defect in decarboxylation of this branch chain amino acids that are leucine isoleucine and valine right what enzyme is defected there is low activity of branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase enzyme complex the child will present as a typical picture of an inborn error of metabolism there would be poor feeding dehydration acidosis and encephalopathy or cns depression right maple syrup urine disease can the name comes from the odor of the urine that is sweet sweet like maple syrup uh, the also there would be raised uh, branch chain amino acids in the serum a test is on the urine adding addition of 2,4 dnph to the urine will give yellow white precipitates treatment is hemodialysis peritoneal dialysis and uh, restriction of diet and a uh, very important supplementation thymine supplement uh, supplementation sometimes is helpful in some cases another question was a child was born with absent thymus gland and congenital hypoparathyroidism this is likely to the mild development of which structures a uh, diagram was given showing uh, pharyngeal arches clefts and pouches uh somewhat like this structure this is the first pouch second pouch third pouch fourth pouch here there would be first cleft second third and fourth cleft right we all know that they are talking about d georgi syndrome that is catch 22 caused by the mal development of third and fourth pharyngeal arches but if you have to choose one option that would be third pharyngeal pouch that uh, third pharyngeal pouch gives rise to thymus and the inferior parathyroid gland fourth pharyngeal pouch gives rise to the ultimo brachial body and the superior parathyroid gland so if you have to choose one option that would be the third pharyngeal pouch cash 22 is the mnemonic here c is for the cardiac defect the most important cardiac defect that is seen in djort syndrome is interrupted aortic arch syndrome the second most common uh, hair is trunkus arteriosus followed by tof a is for abnormal feces t is for thymic hypoplasia that leads to t cell defects c is again for cleft palate h is for hypocalcemia and 2 is for the chromosome number 22 the first sign that are seen in these patients is this h that is refractory neonatal hypocalcemia Now the question was for a preterm child, what is the best suited in the absence of breast milk? You have to remember that uh, nothing but breast milk is the best for the child. If not available, then you can go on to the formula feeds. If not available, then you can only go to the other sources uh, of milk, animal sources of milk, right? Uh, American Academy of Pediatrics. and as pagan that is european society of pediatric gastroenterology hepatology and nutrition committee on nutrition gives clearly this says clearly this donor human milk should be given as the feeding of choice if a uh, mother's own milk is not sufficient or unavailable or contraindicated and uh, this human donor milk is somewhat inferior to mother's own milk but it is superior to the formula milk 
right and formula milk is superior to cow's milk or any other animal milk right and uh, this donor milk would just act as a bridge and a way to achieve exclusive human milk diet until mother's own milk is available right so the question was which of the following is recommended dose for hpv vaccination in girls aged 9 to 14 years according to who sage protocol the answer to this question is two doses uh, we know that in april 2022 Certain opinions were given by WHO Sage protocols. These opinions said that for nine to fourteen years of girls, even a single dose and two dose schedule can be given. A single dose schedule is as effective. In fifteen to twenty years of age, again single to one uh, two dose are effective. More than twenty one years of age, two doses should be given. In immunocompromised, three doses should be given. But still, uh, the answer to this question should be two doses because these are uh, just the opinions and not proper recommendations of made. Other question was cal on calculating the EGFR. A four-year-old male child with body weight of fifteen kg and height hundred centimeter is admitted with renal failure. His blood urea was hundred milligram plus deciliter, and the serum creatinine was one milligram per deciliter. What is the closest EGFR in this patient? Right, we calculate EGFR based on Schwartz formula that is given in OP Ghai as well as uh, your uh, Nelson. The Schwartz formula say that EGFR is equal to K that is constant into height in centimeter divided by serum creatinine in milligram by deciliter. K constant value is point four four. Height of the child is hundred. Uh, creatinine is one. So the answer to this question is. Uh, closest is 40 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square body surface area. The question, uh, the next question was: One year old boy is brought to you for vaccination. He has received only one shot of DPT at six weeks. What should you do now? Straight away give second dose of DPT shot because of the immunological memory that was made by the first shot. We do not restart the schedule. We just give the second dose, right? Next question was a two-year-old male child was admitted with recurrent bloody stools, atopic dermatitis, eye like rash, petit k on CBC. The TLC was normal and platelet count was twenty thousand. What is the next best step for the diagnosis? Here it is a male child with recurrent bloody stools, but the recurrent infection, some what recurrent infections are there. Atopic dermatitis like rash that is eczema-like condition and thrombocytopenia. So you can see a triad forming here of recurrent infection, right? Eczema and thrombocytopenia. This is the triad of Viscott-Alvarez syndrome. What is the next best step to establish the diagnosis? Antiplatelet antibody assessment, screening of WASP expression, that is Viscott-Alvarez syndrome protein expression, and bone marrow aspiration (LFT and RFT). The answer to this question is screening of WASP expression. The next question is tongue fasciculation as a feature of tongue fasciculation as a feature of denervation that is seen in spinal muscular atrophy. The next question is what is not useful for the management of hyperkalemia? Salbutamol nebulization, IV magnesium sulfate, calcium gluconate, insulin and dextrose. The answer to this question is ma IV magnesium sulfate. First step in uh, management of hyperkalemia is giving uh, calcium gluconate to stabilize the membrane. The second step. Is to move the extra cell of potassium into the cell. This is achieved by the salbutamol nebulization, insulin dextrose, or by sodium bicarb. Right? Magnesium sulfate is given in exacerbation of asthma, not given in the management of hyperkalemia. Other question was which of the following is useful in the uh, not useful in the management of sickle cell anemia? And the answer to this question was a monoclonal antibody used in COVID nineteen in adults. As well as in pediatric population more than twelve years of age, the other questions, uh, the other options are hydroxyurea, voxelator, and deglutamine. Hydroxyurea is given time and again for uh, sickle cell anemia, right? Uh, the other was voxelator. It is an uh, uh, agent, uh, modulator agent that uh, increases the affinity of oxygen to the hemoglobin. An affinity modulator approved by FDA in two thousand nineteen. The other option is L-glutamine. L-glutamine is given as an add-on with hydroxyurea. Uh, it uh, in patients more than five years of age. It is uh, known to reduce the hospitalization and crisis. The last question was ectopic tissue in Meckel's diverticulum. 
is gastric and pancreatic we uh, read the rule of two in meckel's diverticulum one of the rule is two types of ectopic tissues are seen that are gastric and pancreatic and sometimes jejunal tissue can also be seen so the answer to this question was gastric and pancreatic uh, the analysis of this paper is pretty much clear there are a lot of repeat questions and i believe you should uh, you should 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 practice previous year questions thoroughly by heart this is the mistake i did and uh, i don't want any one of you to do the same mistake so please repeat questions uh, revision should be the key whenever you are giving uh, i n i c t exam um, i hope this exam was good for you and if not uh, there always a second chance for you out there uh, all the best for your result see you next time bye bye